Cars 3 is the third film in the Disney Pixar Cars trilogy and introduces us to many brand new characters and brings back some old ones from the original film. Cars 3 seems to have many deep messages in it, but at the end of the film the biggest question may be does it leave room for Disney Pixar to make a Cars 4? So before I go any further, keep in mind, everything from here on out has major movie ruining spoilers to Cars 3, so you've been warned. So the overarching theme in simple terms in Cars 3 seems to be about admitting you've become too old for something and accepting retirement. Which is a pretty mature theme for a kids movie. I mean, what do kids have to learn to retire from? Unless it's something like those ridiculous fidget spinners. I'd understand retiring from those after your teen years, because after that, you're a grown ass adult. Put the fidget spinner down. But really though, Cars 3 is a tale of mentorship and learning to put aside your ego in order to bolster someone else's. Lightning McQueen realizes that this is the end of his reign on top of the racing world, and like Doc Hudson trained and mentored him to be a champion, it's his turn to do the same for former car trainer Cruz Ramirez. As for the breakdown of Cars 3, it's a pretty simple story. Starting with a brand new race season, Lightning McQueen slowly starts to do worse and worse as the season progresses, and the sport is slowly being taken over by the younger generation of race cars that are far more superior to their predecessors and use far more advanced training technology, causing the now veteran race car drivers to be forced into early retirement. But not yet Lightning, who refuses to let Father Time beat him, which results in a horrific crash as Lightning tries to keep up with the much younger and faster Jackson Storm in the final race of the season. Which I've always wondered, when a car in the Cars movie universe wrecks, and they have to say, show proof of insurance at a hospital where they're injured, do they show life insurance or car insurance? Ha ha ha. Anyway, this leads Lightning into a four month hiding period where he wonders how did Doc Hudson deal with the younger drivers coming into the sport after he retired? But Lightning gets his chance to compete with this new generation at the brand new Rust Ease Racing Center, the rights of which were sold to a man named Sterling by the original owners of the Rust Ease brand, Dusty and Rusty, who, like the rest of the older cars, have realized that it's time to retire and cash in on the brand they've created. Sterling is a huge fan of McQueen's, but tries to convey in Lightning that every time you lose, you damage your name. So the two together come up with an ultimatum. At the first race of the new season in Florida, if Lightning wins, he chooses if he retires. But if he loses, he retires from racing altogether in order to promote the new Lightning McQueen brand that Sterling has created for him. A training montage in a way ensues as head trainer at the Rusty's Racing Center, Cruz Ramirez is in charge of getting Lightning back in shape for the upcoming race. But Cruz Ramirez has a deep backstory in the film as well. She never wanted to be a trainer. She too dreamed of being a racer, since she is essentially the same style of race car as this new generation, but just lacked the right kind of confidence to compete. Which is the polar opposite in McQueen's case as he never had any issues with confidence. After their training, Lightning realizes that these new methods just aren't working out for him, so he goes back to some more familiar ones teaching Cruz some new techniques in the process without even realizing it and then remembers his old friend and mentor, Doc Hudson, realizing that he trained me, so that means somebody must have trained him, right? Enter Doc's old trainer, Smokey, who teaches Lightning that like him, Doc also had to deal with an ignorant young talent coming into the sport, and while you may not be the fastest anymore, you can be the smartest. Implementing a new racing technique in the Cars movie universe called drafting, which really quick for all you non-gearheads out there, Drafting is the process of two or more cars following one another closely nose to tail to cut down wind resistance, which allows those multiple cars to go faster than a single car, where now only the front cars to deal with cutting through the air and not having to deal with any drag on the rear, and the car in the rear doesn't have to deal with cutting through any of the air, only to deal with the drag or downforce on the rear. This can also cause the car in front to become really loose in the rear end. <laughs> hey, no, that's, that's not funny loose at the rear tires because the follow car has taken away the lead car's downforce causing the car to become slower. SCIENCE! Anyway back to the movie. This new technique is what Lightning plans to use to get the upper hand on Jackson Storm. As the Florida 500 begins, Lightning moves through the pack well, but quickly realizes his time is over and it's time to pass the torch to a younger driver. Breaking every racing rule in the real world, but now having Cruz Ramirez take his place in the race because apparently as long as there's one car in the track with the number 95 on it, they could essentially send a brand new car out there every time they make a pit stop. But this is a sweet moment, so I'll try not to ruin it. And like Doc Hudson used to be the crew chief in Lightning McQueen's ear, Lightning does the same for Cruz, now using her same training methods to calm her down and get her focused on the win. Jackson Storm tries to put her down, but Lightning tells her he wouldn't do that unless he was scared of you, 
giving her the confidence to fight for the lead using the same drafting technique discussed earlier, which takes Jackson Storm off his racing line, and Cruz avoids being wrecked a la Doc Hudson back in the day by doing the old Fast and Furious 1 barrel roll, leading to a victory for both Cruz and Lightning McQueen because they both ran in the race, because who needs rules anyway, right? With the win comes a brand new official race look and sponsor for Cruz Ramirez, and Lightning even changes his name and paint scheme to the fabulous Lightning McQueen as an homage to Doc Hudson, and because Lightning technically won the race, he can now choose to keep racing if he wanted to. But, like Doc Hudson, whose best years of his life were watching Lightning win, McQueen plans on doing the same for Cruz Ramirez. And that's the ending explained of Cars, so you're now onto the setup or if there's any chance of Disney Pixar making a Cars 4. The post credit scene doesn't give fans anything other than a little more screen time for Mater, and as far as Cars 3 director Brian Fee's thoughts, in a recent interview he basically says he's not sure and has no clue where the franchise will go afterwards, as this was the third act which does tend to be the final one in movies. Really the only chance it seemed is possible for a spin-off movie with Cruz Ramirez, but as far as a big budget hour and a half movie, it does seem like Cars 3 is the big final adventure for the Cars movie universe. Disney has done several short featurettes including Mater's Tall Tales and Tales from Radiator Springs, which I'm sure they'll continue to do more of, but if there is any news on a Cars 4, I'll be sure to let you all know here first. And that's everything I have for the Any Explained breakdown and future of Cars 3. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below, and tell me your thoughts on the film. Also be sure to comment if you would like to see any spin-off movies and which character from Cars you would like to see star in those films. And don't forget, as always, this is Five Fingers Explains Everything with the Thingabang Show. Ciao.